And um, we're going to be discussing that now because uh, the last proletarians of football, uh, the story of the Swedish model. Uh, here to tell us more about mm. it, a uh, uh, f- familiar name to uh, Liverpool fans, Glenn Hussein, their former defender. Glenn, how are you doing? Um, okay, so far. Good, good, I don't good. know what's happening here, but <laughs> <That's good. laughs> yeah. we're going to be very gentle with you. We <laughs> certainly are. Not, not do, a problem at all. do you get over to do uh, get over here much? Yeah, I've been uh, plenty of times when I worked for the television. We did the the Champions League, a lot of games with Chelsea, Arsenal, and hmm. so I've been here quite a lot. Yeah, yeah. So tell us a bit about this film because actually I haven't heard of this one at all. What's it about? Well, it's about uh, EF Gothenburg at the um, beginning of the 80s. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a thing about the situation in Gothenburg at that time as well, with, oh. the, with the jobs. Uh, but many people lost their jobs. and uh, So it's, it's a bit of both politi- politics uh, and the football. And uh, our little team uh, came out in Europe and won the uh, UEFA Cup in 82. Mm, of course. Uh, with half professional players. We were plumbers, electricians. And we beat the big teams in Europe. Wow! Well, what did you do at that time? I played as a defender at that time. At that day. Oh, well, you mean yeah, when I worked? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I know you were a defender. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I was an <laughs> electrician. Okay. So, we, so we worked from uh, seven o'clock in the morning till half two, and then straight to the training. Maybe wow. it's a good time to tell you that really the reason we've got you in today is we've got a slight wiring problem there. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm, not think, I'm not sure if I can, I can fix that. <laughs> <laughs> so you've not kept your hand in then, Glenn? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I haven't done a thing since 83, 84 maybe. Well, and, uh, and Sven was the manager, Sven Goran Eriksson. Yeah, he came in uh, in 79 to go with the place. And uh, we he, thought to begin with that the, he was very small and big glasses. Like, what's this? <laughs> but he proved us wrong after a month when he told this philosophy about football. So And then it just went straight up. I mean, players, yeah, I think players yeah. do generally. They'll look at someone and they'll try and side. They'll make... They'll make <laughs> well, I know it's wrong, but yeah, see, that's the first impression. first impression like, you yeah, get, yeah. you think, what's this guy on about? Yeah. But, but you can turn those impressions around. You think that's of course, possible. of course. He is the perfect example of that. But he and had a brilliant record, didn't he, oh, in, yeah. in club football? And, yeah. and, and maybe what happened with the England job and afterwards, some of the things don't reflect on him as well as his earlier career. No. Uh, well, what do you mean now? Well, well I mean, in, in as much as, you know, the, it, with England, I mean, he got a bit of a hard time. And then when he left and took over at various clubs and people sort of just accused him of saying, well, he'd only go there for the money or this type of thing. But he had a fantastic record in club football. Oh, in Italy as well. Italy. Well, well, didn't he do quite well for the England team as well? Or yes, They didn't yeah, win he did. anything, but it's he funny did, though, but, but, he beyond did, but they were in two sure. quarterfinals, I guess, or something. Or wasn't that right? Oh, no, sure. I mean, I think we, we probably take that. And I that. think he had a bit, yeah, he was a bit unlucky in Manchester City because the year after he left when he had to go, hmm. the money come rolling into the, to the club. Hmm. So he, if he had stayed for another year, he might have be as sexy as Mancini. Is he, is he still kind of very well regarded in, in Swedish football? Yeah, he's football? high regarded, but uh, people start uh, maybe thinking a little bit, because now he's signed something in Thailand or whatever yeah. it was. So, like you said, the people well, I think start that's the difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's, like, he, some of the giants. But he's, he's still very popular sure. in Sweden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's a good man. He's he, everybody loves him. Hmm. He's, he's such a nice person. Yeah, that comes across from some of the stories you hear about him from uh, former players that he played under. So, um, what was it about this Gothenburg team then? Why why was it such a good side? Well, well, the, the most important thing I think was that we we could play together for five, six, seven years. Hmm. Nobody left abroad because um, they liked the club and nobody really wanted to leave because it was a very good time for the club. And you won basically everything. You won the UEFA Cup twice, semi-final against Barcelona in 86 in the European Cup. Won the Swedish League like three or four times in a row. So there was no no real reason to, to leave the club and it was good atmosphere and everything was pointing to this up. Mm. And uh, Liverpool came in for you presumably on the back of your performances for Gothenburg. Yeah, yeah, basically. I think they were mainly it was the game we played in England and Wembley '88. Oh, I had course, a yeah. quite good game. Hmm. Uh, okay, <laughs> it was yeah. a good Swedish team. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mick, it, it continued to produce good players as we saw in the European Championship. It went sort of to the wire in the England game. I mean, what do you think about the state of, the sort of Swedish football at the moment, Glenn? Well, the national team is doing quite all right. They've qualified for the last five, five or six uh, big, big tournaments, hmm. but. In national football in Sweden is not that good at the moment, and that's for for one big reason. Because when 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 you're 18, 19 years old today in Sweden, and you you you, you became a name in Sweden, yeah, you go away, 
mm. to Norway, to Denmark, to a middle middle team in in Holland, Belgium, because you earn like five times more than you do in Sweden. Sure. So I can I, I understand players who 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 sign these contracts because of course it's it's a bit, a bit a little bit about money as well. So um, but we as long as we can't keep players from going to Norway and Denmark and, and Holland, we're in deep trouble. I mean, if, if somebody gets so good, it goes to the the Premier League or to, to Italy or Spain, yeah. that's okay. But not to Norway and Denmark. So we, 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 we have no chance to play a team together because the best ones just, they leave when they're 19. And how's uh, uh, Big Zlatan viewed in uh, in uh, Sweden? I take it he's, he's sort of loved there, isn't he, Ibrahimovic? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But now, he, now he's because um, like five six years ago, there was more like two two um, two different. Uh, I mean, fifty percent was was for him and fifty percent was against him mm. because of his he's got a special mentality. Mm. But now he's uh, settled down by a, a bit and he's getting older, uh, more uh, thinking about uh, thinking a little bit more now. So yeah. I think everybody loves him. Well, I think I know that everybody loves him. Do you uh, do you keep an eye on Liverpool as well? Okay, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Every I see every game. And what do you make of what Brendan Rodgers is trying to do? Is starting to, you know, good result of the weekend. That was so. a good result now the weekend, yeah. But I, I still think that his football the philosophy, the, the 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 attacking football, I think everybody wants wants that. But I don't know if if they got the players to do it. I don't know. But hopefully they, uh, I think he he uh, they will they will progress in the league. But to win something, I, I think this is too early. But in a year or two, maybe. I think it's a, it's down to the owners. Uh, the, if they see exactly. they see progression, yeah. they probably will put some money into it. And they, yeah. they didn't exactly support him in the transfer window. The last one that's just no, gone. No. In fact, they let him. But down then it's him. another thing. Uh, Liverpool, uh, what, 10, 20 years ago, everybody wanted to, to play for Liverpool. Now they they've lost that thing because the, the big youth talent out in Europe. If Liverpool comes and say we want you, I don't. I'm not sure they cho- chose Liverpool instead of Chelsea. Arsenal, Manchester City, United, they, they are on the top now. Liverpool is a bit low there now, mm. and it could be hard to, to switch that around again. A, a long young process. Players, sorry, I was yeah. going to say, if young players are getting a chance at Liverpool, then maybe other younger players will think, well, at least if I go there, I'll get a game. Yeah, yeah, so there is that advantage too. Yeah. Sorry. No, I was just going to say that you know it's going to be it's not going to be a, 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 a kind of snap thing. It's going to take no, a no, while, no. isn't it? As you say, there's going to be a turnover of players over the next couple of years. But do you think... Having kind of got rid of Kenny relatively quickly, do you think they'll keep faith with him? The, if they the, the ball, do you think they'll stick with him as a manager, Brendan Rodgers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, I mean, there's no idea how long are you signed for? Three years, four years? What mm. is that? Three? I think it was. Yeah. They can't kick him out and get another one, and it's too much money involved in that. So just give him a chance, give him a year or two, and see what happens. And presume you were watching uh, the Ryder Cup because there was some Swedish involvement, wasn't there? I didn't watch it, but I, I yeah. read about it. But yeah. I heard it was a great turnaround uh, from was it ten six to 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 a win? Yeah, to yeah. a win. Yeah, 14. I'm not a golfer, so I'm we're not all, very we're into all that. We're Europeans but, together. But, but, a footballer. <laughs> we're, I read about it. I just, I'm in shock. A footballer who played <laughs> at Liverpool yeah. in the eighties who's yeah. not a golfer. No, not for real. Yeah, I know uh, that everybody was playing there. Alan Hansen, uh, Ron Whelan, all of them played it. But no, 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 no. I just stayed in the pub. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, well, they, not really. <laughs> did they try and convert you? Did they kind of keep taking you to Southport and they sort of bumped yeah, you in the back of a van? We were uh, we were watching the the British Open in Birkdale. Like, was it eighty nine, ninety or something? Mm. Ninety one, probably. It was it was nice to watch. It, it's uh, you you get really impressed with the players. They're so good. But they I couldn't know... get you into the game. They couldn't get, they couldn't get you playing. No, I'm not interested. It's too um, for the first. It takes so long time to get good at it. And if mm. you're not good, you miss the ball every time and then uh, fuck it. Like, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, it's okay. I yeah. didn't say that. Don't worry. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's easy. You're having a conversation. <laughs> it's not a problem. Sorry about that. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> um, are you, uh, are you, you still managing, uh, Glenn? Are yeah, yeah. The uh, division, division one side in, in Gothenburg. We, we just came up to this, to this league, so uh, we're just planning to stay up. Mm. And that, that's where we are right now. All three of your boys play as well. Uh, football, yeah, my they? oldest one is playing for EF Gothenburg in the oh, first wow. division in Sweden. Fantastic. Mm. Yeah, and uh, the other two, the other, one of them is a goalkeeper and the third one is uh, playing for our team. Yes, the, team, I, the team. Yeah, that's the team I manage. Anton. Anton, yeah. yeah Anton, uh, as I think people know, the Anton came out, uh, probably the first high-profile player to do that. I mean, how has that been for him since, Glenn? Uh, only positive. I've, I've, uh, I haven't done any negative things, basically. Not about, he hasn't said anything to me. 
and uh, it's been a huge thing in Sweden and in all, all Europe in the world. I, mm. I can't understand why it's getting so big. There's nothing, nothing special with that. If he had been an actor or something else, nobody said anything. But just because it's a football, mm. yeah, I think it's just because other players who obviously are gay, because it's by the law of probabilities, haven't come out and haven't done this. So, so when a player does do it, people people notice it. People make a remark on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the the, the biggest thing was that um, what's his name now the uh, the ice hockey player from uh, <laughs> New Rangers, the tough guy. Yes, yeah, so always yeah. gets sent off. He he had a you write a letter to him or a mail that said. Fantastic thing you did there. Mm. Hope we can do this in the NHL. So, um, what's his name? Ah. It will come. Somebody will know. Yeah, somebody yeah, will yeah. be tweeting it in. Yeah, yeah, okay. The um, knowing Britain as as well as you know, in England as well as you do, you think uh, Anton's decision would have been accepted as readily in this country? Maybe it says a bit more about Swedish society than it. Or, or do you think it could it could happen here, and he would have been as comfortable doing it? Well, I'm I'm not uh, very into the, the the English community. I don't know how how they function here, but. In Sweden, it hasn't been any problem at all. It's just a good thing. Everybody is so positive with it. And I'm, I don't think that like 200 people, 200 players would come out say, and say we are homosexual. Uh, uh, that's not the point. It's just if, if somebody, one or two, just mm. follows. Well, I mean, sure. w- one, of the, one of the things that's said here is it's not so much the players th- themselves. Well, nobody would bat an eyelid. It's more the crowd, how the away crowds would, would react to him and... Has he had any problems with crowds? No, 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 no. Because we're playing in the first division. That there, there is no crowd. There, there is like <laughs> two hundred people at the at the games. But okay. my oldest son, Tobias, he's playing for the first division, mm. and um, he's got a few sticks from from the uh, from the away supporters. Mm. Okay. But nothing, nothing bad, really. I mean, it's just like you know, supporters. They are. They do songs, and uh, it's just to take that. It's no mm. problem. Okay. Uh, just finally, Glenn, before we talk about the film, just before we, we let you go, um, Sergio Aguero has uh, said that he thinks that um, foreign players uh, get a rougher deal than uh, than players from this country, from referees. He doesn't think that that's particularly I right. I just heard about it, yeah. Do you, do you agree? Well, I think, uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm, I'm not sure I'm all right here now, but I, I think they have to suit themselves a little bit because, I, I mean, Suarez is a great player, but he's diving all the time. And sooner or later, the, re- the referees know that, oh, that was him. That's probably nothing done. So you get a disadvantage in the end. I'm not saying that everybody does that, but some of them, um, I know when I played in Italy, there was every game was 10, 15 of these things. Mm. And it's, I, it's not fair, really. No, it's, not fair. It's, a, it's a rough decision for the, for the, for the, for the referees to, well, of course, when you see the replay 15 times, you can say, but the referee, he sees it once. So I, I'm not sure if, he, I don't think he's right. There were fewer foreign players playing here when you were playing here. So, I mean, did you, was there a lot of diving going on then? Was that starting? Or was it probably a lot more now than there was when no, you were no, playing? No, I can't remember really because uh, the clubs were just allowed to have two foreigners. So there wasn't course, too many yeah. of them. Mm. So, um, no, not really. I, I can't remember any cause it happened. But nowadays you see it every day. I saw a game, Calgary, against who they played. They got two penalties. This is like two months ago or something. And they was just diving like so, like, half a meter from the from from the from the defender. Mm. He just dives and get two penalties on that. It's the one where they leave their leg, where the where the, <sighs> the forward, the 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 forward plays it, his leg against the defender that drives yeah, yeah. him mad. <laughs> that's, that's, that is sad, sad. So um, uh, the last proletarians of uh, football. Uh, it's at the Everyman Cinema in Baker Street in London, Sherlock Holmes Country, nine p.m. Uh, there's a few tickets available on the door if you'd love to go and see it. Glenn will be there, of course. Are you going to be? Talking after the film, uh, the I think we'll just have a little chat before the game, oh, before the film. Fantastic! That'll but be I think great. it's coming out on DVD. Oh, I know it's coming out it on is. DVD in English. Yeah, it's a Brilliant. DVD is about to be released in the UK as well. Every Man Cinema, Baker Street in London, nine PM tomorrow. You'll hear from uh, Glenn. Is it tonight? I think. Oh, do apologise. Is it tonight? Yeah. It's uh, sorry. Glenn. No it's problem. Tonight. It's tonight. tonight. It's, it's not send everybody there tomorrow. <laughs> it's, it's because I'm getting confused. Yeah. It's tonight. So. Uh, uh, it should be fantastic. Uh, part of the uh, Kicking and Screening uh, Film Festival. Um, lovely to see you, Glenn. Thanks so much for Thank coming. Thank you very we much. Appreciate it. Enjoy. Thank you. Glenn Hussein there. Um, it's approaching, uh, we've just gone quarter to three. It's Hawksby and Jacobs here on Talk Sport. More of your calls, emails, texts, and tweets when we come back. We're here with.